This is some more like, 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 like that. I try to ride up that that ridge. Yeah, a bunch of it. Yeah, you hear it. Look away. That's the Rosetta Stone. What I was looking on is that. You can literally look on the the words and see where Arabic comes from and the rest of the languages. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But how did they know what this is? See right there? You have the pa, ta, l, sorry, o, l, m. Patolomy. So we understand his name is right here. Then we see the unk. I don't know what this is up here, but I think this is unjet, patar, or Murray, the beloved son of Patar. That's what's written in this Katush. You understand? But really and truly, if most of you are on it, I mean, I can do it myself. I can translate this, but it's kind of hard because some of the glyphs, I wouldn't really know how to translate that because I don't know what glyph. Correct? Okay. In the beginning, created God. That's how it's read. Who created God? In the beginning. Well, what's their God called in the beginning? The source, whatever it is. Okay, so now if you read my Bible, it says, in the beginning, in the beginning, created God. Created him, huh? God. This next word here, 401, doesn't even have a meaning. You don't understand the mysteries of how the Bible was written. Because the Jews know how it was written. This word et doesn't even have a meaning. So we go back here. Bara shet bara Elohim. What does it mean? What does Beth mean? What does that mean? En. What does that say Resh means? En. What is Alif? Gold. What is Shish? Fire. What is Yod? The hand. What is Tet? The cross. Bara shet then is who? Remember I showed you Daniel Matt and he's, he was talking about this in the last class. That DVD is down here, or well, I think I haven't copied them yet, remember? And he was saying, Barashet Elohim, and he was going, let's read it how the Torah reads it. And he's going, in the beginning, created God. And he said, who created God? Einzoff. Who's Einzoff? Let's go back to it. Oh, where have I gone? Eins off. Can you see it? Yeah. So who's Eins off on the tree of life? Keta, correct? So now we can see the masculine, correct? And we can see the feminine. But I've already taught you, Keta is not on the tree of life. And you can see the geometric pyramid shape before the first three triangles. This is the upper world, correct? Correct? All right, we're going back years now, all right? So we know that from the light, Einzoff, it created Hotma, which means, and it created Bina, which means understanding. Who in Egypt is associated with wisdom? So now we go back to the Bible, and we say, Bara Shet, Bara Elohim. Elohim, Ella, Goddess, female noun, terminated by the plural masculine. Yod Mim. When the Mim is sealed, secret in the word. Elohim means gods and goddesses. How do you then have a monotheistic deity? Yeah, the elements, yeah. Remember, yeah. ask the Christians, yeah, yeah. what's the initials above his head? Yeah. Earth, yeah. fire, oh, yeah. water, yeah. all the four elements. Four. He was the fifth element, Kepha. You take the K off, you get Ether. This is what they're trying to show you in a type of typology. This is what they do. So you read the Bible, you won't get the story. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's not written like that. I think it was the CEO of God text. Was yeah. And there he was talking about um, not understanding or knowing about, you know, day. Okay, this, like this thing. Like that. Um, 
I, I recently was reading the, um, the Book of Enoch. Okay. And in the Book of Enoch, there's a, there's a specific kind of um, passage or chapter where it talks about how how the sun rotates and the different chambers that the sun sits in right. and blah, blah, blah. So if that was explained in the Book of Enoch, which obviously should really sit somewhere in the middle of Genesis. Right, right. How can he say then that he that there's no understanding? Do you understand what, yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the this is the this is the thing with the Bible. Like I was saying to the girl yesterday, when I was saying to you, I was saying to her, did Moses, did anybody see God? And she's like, no, God is incorporeal. And I'm like, okay. But I'm saying, but God did speak to Moses face to face. I said, no, no, it never happened. But I just showed it to you in the Bible, right? Mm. That uh, he speaks, to, this is the contradiction with the Bible. Mm. So this is why we ask some of these questions. So even in the book of Enoch, he says that he sees God. He walked with God. And this is my hope, this is my problem with the Christians. That's why I said to you, when you speak to someone, the first question you ask them when they come talking to you about God, is this the incorporeal God or the corporeal? And they'll stop and think for a minute. Is he physical or is he spiritual? Either way, it's a trick question. It's chess. If you say God is corporeal, you're going to have to start telling me that you believe in a God that eats. I'm not too sure. And I'm like, they're in Africa. This is Genesis. But then you will sit down and say you're a Christian for 10 years. You've never read the book once. Stop letting your pastor read. When you come coming from church, you just say, yeah, let me read this book and see what it's saying. You've never done that? Not even Genesis? Mm, true. So mm. when I say to you that Adam has a second wife, his first wife of called the left, they look at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yes. According to academia, Adam had two wives. And this wife was created equal with Adam. And she went back to heaven. They look at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, it's funny, yeah, like you're saying, it's, it's funny when logic is appropriate when it's not appropriate. Because if you're in the workplace, you can just be coming with, oh, I think this, I think that, you need to have factual stuff. And these same people are Christian, are doctors, lawyers, whatever. But then when it comes to this... It's a discrepancy, the four ventricles, which is the four worlds. In the head, the place of fire. Where does his father come from? Ur of Chaldea. Ur means fire, Chaldea or Kashtin means angels. Fire angels, the place of fire. So he travels down and past Egypt, which is what? The Ablam, what do they call it? The Medulla? The Medulla Ablungata. Medu Ablungata. And on the Ablungata, at the middle of the brainstem, is the ponds and the olives where Jesus stopped on his way to the upper room to talk to the 12 cranial centers. Now what's the 12 cranial centers? One of them is the vagus nerves. Remember I told you about that? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? The wanderer. God is actually telling you the design. I haven't signed it like an artist does, but my signature is all over you. How would you know that? Study yourself. Like I said to the girl yesterday, if the devil's number is six, six in Revelation, and the human atoms that you were talking about earlier in quarks, what is the atom? Is it not 666? Okay. What's the significance? Who's coming there? That's going to have the number 666. That's the devil. Who's coming? So they're basically warning you about yourself, uprising. Mm. Oh yeah. wow. So to them, the sun symbol is 666. Mm. Have I showed you that yeah. before? Mm. So do the sun attack them? No. Huh? Yeah. It attacks them, yes. So to them it would be evil. Mm. But the sun is anthropomorphized as a man in Christ. 